Now this hose is, like I said, pretty new. So I can go ahead and bend it a little bit. It shouldn't kink up. If I do this, you might damage your hook. I'd like to see that. Well, shout out to Shop Life TV, man. I am currently doing research on how to remove my expansion tank on the E46 because I have sprung a coolant leak. That's why I haven't been driving it. All right. I also can't seem to find my damn flashlight anywhere, bro. I've looked all over the damn place. Um, so it looks like it's leaking from, so th this is the, this thing right here is the transmission cooler, which was weird as shit, bro. It has me like, dude, why, why couldn't they be like every other manufacturer and just these lines hook, it, like it be built into the damn radiator, you know what I'm saying? But it looks like it's leaking from right here, from that plastic piece right there where this hose connects to and it's so freaking hard to tell like I can't even point at anything because I'm using my damn cell phone as a flashlight let's see if I can set it down yeah yeah that works so that it's not one piece with the radiator because if you wiggle it like you can see it moving separate from the radiator but I can't tell yeah, see this piece is all one with that and then it runs up and it plugs into the bottom of the expansion tank. So I think this is going to be a separate piece, I think. But I think I need to, it's going to be a whole lot of I think. Um, I think I have to remove the expansion tank in order to actually get that piece off. And then I got to figure out how to disconnect these damn BMW freaking coolant lines. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm trying to get this fixed because I'm tired of not having this thing that I'm capable of driving. You know what I'm saying? It's a perfectly good working vehicle. And ever since, it's been, I want to say, like two weeks since that sprung a leak. I was on my way home one day and I just parked it. I was like, man, I'm not messing with that thing right now. I'm way too busy with this damn, with the giveaway Civic and everything else. But now it's to the point, I need more than one running car. I want to throw it. Really wish I could find my damn flashlight. Surprisingly easy. I shouldn't have said that. So I got the air box out of the way and I disconnected this upper radiator hose, which it is like this plastic housing. And you got these clips, you have to pull the clips up and then it separates. And I guess this seals with like a, like an O-ring type of thing on the inside of there. And it seals onto this expansion tank. I know that there's, it hooks at the bottom and there's like right down there. You see that thing that's sticking out right above my finger right there. That is like another one of these type of things, but it has a little pull tab on it. So you pull that and that releases that. I've already done that, but oh, there it goes. <laughs> you just had to pull a little bit harder. Now the whole thing just pulled up. So I think what I'm actually just needing to do here is just kind of move the expansion tank out of my way. Now I'm gonna get underneath there and see what that little elbow thing that is cracked is con if what it's connect if I can get that off separate from the radiator. I'm hoping probably ought to disconnect this line too. <sighs> I feel like the whole uh, cooling system on this car is a ticking time bomb, bro. Because all the hoses feel like dry. Like they're not going to last long. So I don't need more problems. All right. Now coming back underneath. So that's the piece I'm trying to get out so I can replace it. Our expansion tank is right here. And it has a an opening that attaches to the radiator right there. But it also has another like smaller one that attaches to this piece that we're trying to remove. But at the top so this has like another elbow that sticks straight up that actually went into the bottom of the expansion tank and it seals with like an o-ring or something so that was stopping getting this piece out so now so like if you wiggle it that whole thing moves by itself like it's not moving the radiator it's not moving the expansion tank it's just moving by itself so it looks like i don't know if this is heat no this can't be heater because this is running to the cooler so this is a cold line 
that is coming from somewhere maybe after i don't know but anyhow this is another coolant line we got to disconnect that um and then it goes into this and then this has a piece that goes into the bottom of the expansion tank like i was saying and then that right there actually went into this freaking transmission cooler so this has three little bungs on it with o-rings and this thing just and it has another one of those damn little this little clip that held it in that's literally all that held that thing on there and you just give it a little a little pull and the whole thing just goes bloop and came right off dude freaking nuts so now i'm wiggling this thing around the only thing that's still attached is oh let me see man it's still not coming off i'm wondering that little like allen wrench like look, looking head right there like if that is like a retainer that's holding that thing in i don't know i'm gonna try to loosen that and see if this piece will come off and of course it's not an allen wrench of course it's a freaking torx <sighs> nothing's ever easy on this damn car oh ugly phones are waterproof nowadays huh <laughs> all right there it is so whatever in the hell this damn thing is like it's literally just like so the water can come through and then run this direction and run this direction <laughs> i don't freaking know bro this is so weird i ain't never seen anything have weird ass shit like this this is my i i i, I can't say this is my first bmw because you guys know i had the e36 and i i mean i didn't have it very long and oh i didn't drive it very much to have to do any repairs on it you know what i mean so now i just gotta pull this clip up and that hose will come off and then we'll be able to get this thing out Seventeen, seventeen sixty-five on amazon $27 on fpc euro yeah but i'm hoping freaking autozone has it it seems like one of those things like autozone or o'reilly's isn't gonna freaking have dude so we figured out what it's called this is a distribution pipe distribution pipe <laughs> oh is that it that's fucking it if you can give me a part number to take with me that'd be dope does it really say all those stores has it so it's actually probably to go to the warehouse we're going here so the, well that is the oh the warehouse okay this is this is all right this is all right it's not auto zone. oh fuck damn it why don't you check auto zone well guess what nobody has this damn thing in stock bro <clears throat> it's one of those things man like you're you're ready right now you know what i'm saying like i'm ready i'm ready for you buddy right freaking now like if i had the new part i could throw it all in the knowledge is fresh in my head of how i took it out reverse the process put it back in i already have all the tools that i need sitting out everything that's got to go back on the car you know but no no I, I can't do it right now because nobody has the part i gotta wait till tomorrow and go to bmw now i gotta put all this stuff up the struggle is real, bro. The struggle is real. Anyhow, see you guys tomorrow. Well, it's the next day, and finally got this damn part. Bingo! So, ended up getting it from O'Reilly's. Had to go to the uh, distribution center to go pick it up. But, yeah, it was like 30 It was like $35. Hey, you guys keep it down out here. Dogs are out here freaking wrestling around hey y'all guys it is freaking hot dude okay google current temperature in phoenix the temperature in phoenix currently is 103 degrees it's miserable it is absolutely miserable i mean it wouldn't be that bad if it wasn't already yeah it's already two o'clock so it's like it's like the hottest part of the day and i'm just getting out here to get started <laughs> it's always better for me whenever i am able to get out here first thing in the morning and actually like you you kind of adjust to it as it starts to get hotter throughout the day but whenever you have to just jump right into it from doing a bunch of stuff inside the house in the air conditioning all morning long and then you gotta jump outside to 100 degrees <sighs> It's miserable, but one thing that kind of helps and yes, I know I'm white as fuck and I have a farmer's tan going on <laughs> But one thing that kind of helps is you completely drench your t-shirt, bro So I got this wet in the sink really quick and wring it out Woo! That right there my friend is Arizona air conditioning when you have to work outside in the heat <laughs> But yeah, it makes you feel a lot better dude Like the heat isn't nearly as bad whenever you completely drench your shirt. So I mean that's a tip for you if if you find that helpful, then great. If not, then yeah. I feel bad for you guys that live in like Florida though with all the humidity, man. Like, 
I've contemplated on moving to Florida if, I, if I'm being honest um, especially here recently whenever I learned that you guys don't pay um, taxes there <laughs> anyhow I'm gonna get this thing thrown together dude I'm not really gonna record it I'm just gonna get this thing thrown together and uh, and fill it up and hopefully we don't have any more water leaks man because this thing was leaking bad and yes the old one of these had a crack in it but i swear dude like it was leaking a lot i just feel like there's probably more than one leak knowing my luck all right moment of truth man i got that thing dude i have to tell you i kind of wish that i did record put it back together because it was just a freaking satisfying thing because like i don't know you could talk crap about the whole clips and all that stuff and all these damn water lines all you want and i mean don't get me wrong, in the beginning of this, I was cussing BMW. I'm like, dude, all this stuff is stupid. But once you get it figured out, like you can literally, like I literally did all this with a flathead screwdriver. Like you can pull the clip up, pull a clip, pull a clip. You can go pop, 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 and everything just comes apart. And then to put it all back together, it's just pop, 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 and you just push the clips down. It was actually really freaking satisfying. And you guys already know, uh, since being all this stuff is like, has like O-rings and everything, I just put a little bit of sriracha sauce on all, all of it. But... Now I'm just going to, um, I'm, I'm just putting water in it for now because if I'm being honest with you, I kind of don't really trust it. I feel like there's going to be more than one leak. No freaking way. I think we're good, dude. <laughs> I mean, granted, don't get me wrong. I know I got to go through the whole like bleeding process and actually fill the whole entire system. But the leak was right here at the expansion tank at that piece that we replaced. Um, but it, I'm telling you, man, you guys would have had to have seen it leaking. It, it was nuts. <clears throat> It was like coming out all over the damn place, but it, it, it looked like, I mean, cause now with that piece installed, you see, this is my view of what I first was looking at, not knowing what any of this shit is. I'm like, what in the hell, bro? But yeah, it, it was coming out at the bottom of that, but, um, it was, it was all coming out down here too. And just flowing out like fast. And the crack that we found was literally at the bottom of that piece we just replaced, but it looked like it was coming out of there and potentially coming out of somewhere else. But you know what? I'm not arguing with it, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna go look up exactly how it is I have to do the um, the bleeding process on this because I know that there's like little things that you have to loosen up all over the engine to let all the air get out. There's another thing about BMWs that is just, they have a process, bro. They have a process. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that meme. It said, it, it had like a picture. It had like a picture of the engine sent on, uh, on a stand. It's like everybody wants a BMW until it comes down to doing BMW things. <laughs> well, this is me doing BMW things, bro. All right, so it turns out this is actually really simple. The, uh, the bleeding screw is just right here where you freaking fill it up at. So we just pop that thing off of there. And then I guess you just fill this thing up until it overflows out of that little bleeder hole. And then we'll start it and turn on the heater and all that. All right, one jug down. And no leakage. Well, I mean, I just spilled some right now. So it's got a little drip, but. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> I was gonna say, bro, Jesus. Is it ever gonna come out? Yeah, you see the bubbles are coming out. So getting all the air out of the system. All right, got the air box thrown on because I don't want to throw a sensor for the uh, airflow or throw a check engine light for the airflow sensor not being plugged in. But now I'm going to go ahead and start it up. kick this freaking heater off now jesus slow your roll there buddy bro this car is so filthy you can barely see out the damn window <laughs> i need to wash it like bad Dude, I, don't, I don't know if it's just this car or if there's something wrong with it but like this thing seriously has no balls bro this thing has no power Well, there it is. No more leaks. Yep, nice and dry. Yeah, dude, this thing is filthy. 
as hell, but I don't have time to wash it right now. We'll have to wash the thing later. Because now, on to the exciting part, bro. The part that, um, well, the reason why it is that I wanted to fix the BMW, um, and I'm trying to make sure that I have multiple vehicles running for the next time that... For next time, this damn Suburban breaks down. The um, Suburban left me stranded out in Glendale the other day. Well, a couple of days ago. You guys notice I finally got my grass all knocked down? Actually, did you guys notice how bad my yard was getting? <laughs> I, Whenever my yard gets really bad, I try to keep it out of video because it looks horrible to me. But yeah, I got all the, the grass knocked down. The problem is, is my, um, my gas-powered lawnmower, the... Uh, the string ripped out of it last time that I tried using it. That's the reason why I haven't done the yard in a while. So I, I had the uh, lawnmower loaded up and I was going to a repair shop. I was just going to pay somebody to fix it, bro. Because I was doing research and I was going to do it myself. But the problem is I couldn't find anybody or like anywhere to actually buy the parts that I need to fix it. Stupid freaking lawnmower. Go to hell. But yeah, I couldn't find any, anywhere to buy the parts at. So I was like, you know what? There's a... Uh, there's a lawnmower repair shop in downtown Glendale, you know what I'm saying? So I went down there to go and take the lawnmower, and then by the time I got there, you guys can't see me. By the time I got there, uh, the place was closed, and then I started looking for, long story short, bro, then the damn Suburban broke down, um, and yeah, I had to leave it there overnight, and then I went back and picked it up. It shredded the belt, because as you guys know, the power steering has been out on this for a while. So with the power steering being out, uh, like it's been hard to drive with no power steering for one. But for two, this is also a hydro assist. So um, that power steering pump also powers the power brakes. So this big heavy ass son of a bitch, I have basically been driving as if it had a, a, uh, a brake booster delete. For you Honda guys, you know what it's like to have a brake booster delete and how much stiffer the pedal is and how much harder it is to stop. Well, that's kind of like how the Suburban feels right now, but you know, thing weighs 45,000 freaking pounds. The steering has been difficult, the brakes have been difficult. This thing has been a nightmare and I haven't done it just for the simple fact that, well, I can't even call it lazy, bro. It's just, I'm always working on videos for for the channel you know what i'm saying so it's hard for me to find time to do stuff like this unless i make a video on it you know what i mean i hate not putting up videos so for me to take a day off from making a video to do stuff like this it's it i don't know it, it messes with me so anyhow i went and grabbed a new belt and whenever we went to go pick it up i threw the new belt on i figured that it would last long enough to get home but hell freaking no it lasted like a quarter of a mile so i drove this thing home um, just off the damn battery and uh, no water pump just just like flooring it I'm sure you guys know you floor it and you get you know a good 10 15 miles an hour over the speed limit and then you kill the ignition and you just coast so I had to do that the whole way home so that I wouldn't uh, for one kill the battery for two overheat the damn truck so anyhow guys I have a I have another power steering pump in the backyard that came off of that Tahoe that we got the 5.3 out of. All right, so to start off, I'm gonna remove the intake, the fan shroud. I'm gonna take the battery out and yeah, that's my starting point. Oh, alternator, it's gotta come off as well. Ah, here we go. Super clean to save the day, cause of course all the fluid wasn't out. Just gonna pile this stuff down here so it sucks it up as it leaks out. I love this shit. Yeah. All right, here's the old one. Pump is no good, and the idler pulley is no good. Thing will not even spin, bro. And here is the new 
the new old one <laughs> that the the pump i hope i really 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 hope it's good <laughs> good <laughs> but uh the idler pulley is also good <sighs> i know this stuff's not brand new but you know what it's gonna save me a little bit of money and i have it sitting from the damn tahoe so may as well put it to use she it all right now it's just the same as the bmw same as removal just reverse put it all back together and hopefully get it done before it's too freaking late at night yeah All right, everything's looking good except for um, that spot on this where the belt kind of ate it up. Yeah, bro. That's causing a problem with the mass airflow sensor. It is very displeased with this because it's allowing unmetered air in. So it's basically like a big vacuum leak, you know what I'm saying? Um, so it's acting up because it doesn't know where this extra air is coming from. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to refer to some duct tape, man. Um, for the time being, unfortunately, I don't have one of these just laying around. Matter of fact, I don't remember if the Tahoe had an air box on it. I kind of think it didn't. I think the air box was missing. I do still have my carbon fiber intake that was off that Corvette that I had, but it, it won't fit. It shoots straight out, you know, the nose of the vet, but. Uh, I'm just going to have to look up. Matter of fact, I should measure this while I have it off. Four inch. I need a four inch to four inch 90 degree coupler. Pretty sure you'd call that a coupler, right? <laughs> but yeah, that's what I need. So I kind of made a, I made a little duct tape piece and just kind of stuck it on there really quick just to see if that would um, cheer the engine up. And it did very much so. So now I took it off so I can actually go around it. Cause I'm afraid this piece is just gonna fall off. As soon as it gets warm, it's already trying to fall off. So I figured at least with it going all the way around, hopefully I won't have to worry about it falling off and causing problems while I'm driving. But other than that, dude, it, it started up, everything is fine. I'm just kidding. It popped the damn belt off. So I started it the first time and the belt popped off. I don't know. I must have missed a spot where the belt wasn't on completely. Dude, it was tripping me out. I'm like, why is the freaking belt popping off now? Like, I was... I was having a moment. You know, um... I popped the belt back on, started it again. Haven't had any problems. And dude, the steering wheel... Bro, I haven't felt power steering on that thing in months months so i'm excited about that it almost feels dangerous like having something that big and heavy and and able to um maneuver like it it sounds dangerous for me make sure there's enough room on there for my freaking uh hose clamps yeah here we go Oh my god, dude. It feels freaking nuts having power steering on this thing again. Holy shit. Oh. <laughs> I'm not fucking you. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm not used to this thing having brakes like that. <laughs> god damn. Bro, Pete, there is somebody walking. You guys can't even see me. There's somebody walking back there, and they're all dogging me and shit. Because I slammed on my... I didn't mean to. I'm not used to having power brakes. Dude, that is like night and day. <laughs> Holy shit, bro. I could whip some donuts in this motherfucker. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. All right, I might try later. freaking yes all right i still need to go get a um the check engine light that's for a coil pack yes i still need to do that and um somebody commented the last time i brought it up that i should just grab a coil pack off the 5.3 because they're all the same but they're not the coil packs on the 5.3 are way different so <sighs> anyhow dude this thing feels brand new ish